Hey y'all, welcome back to the party. It's your girl Britt Reacts and today we are reacting to the Magic Mike story. Uh, this is from Gabriel Iglesias. Let's see what he has to say. When I got home, I was so tired. I, I turned on my phone to check my messages and uh, I had a voicemail message from a guy by the name of Channing Tatum. Okay? <laughs> Now, for those of you not worrying, <laughs> let me explain who that is. Channing Tatum is the new Hollywood hot guy. He's the guy that comes out on all these movies, really good looking, ripped. You know, he's making a lot of films. And there's a voicemail on there from him. Gabriel Iglesias, this is Channing Tatum. Please call me at your earliest convenience, blah, 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 you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. So I called him up, you know, hello. I go, hi, this is Gabriel Iglesias. I'm calling for Mr. Channing Tatum. <laughs> he yells, Fluffy! <laughs> Hello? Uh, I don't know when this was filmed. I've also never seen any of the Magic Mike movies. You guys let me know in the comments. I had to watch this. Like, this was like s number one comment of the day in one of my recent Gabriel videos. And I guess maybe he, he mentioned this. I don't remember. Um, but I just want to speak to the fact that he was saying, again, I don't know when this was filmed, but how he was saying like Channing Tatum was a new guy on the scene. I remember when Step Up came out. That was like his breakthrough movie. At least for me it was. I think I'm pretty sure it was. There was another one he did that I think was another big one. But he he's a dancer. That's how he started in his career. Um, and I just remember being like, oh my gosh, this kid can really dance. And he's fine. So. Let's see where this story goes. <laughs> he yells, Fluffy! <laughs> Hello? Oh, dude, man, I'm a huge fan. Hey, listen, bro, really quick, I only have like a minute. Look, bro, I'm doing a new movie, and I want to see if you're interested in reading and auditioning for one of the parts. I go, I go, sure, bro, I, I, I'd be happy to audition for, for uh, you know, for your movie. What's, what's it called? He goes, the movie's called Magic Mike. I was like, okay, Magic Mike, so you need a magician, you need an assistant, you want to saw me in half, what's gonna happen? Actually, bro, the movie has nothing to do with magic. It's actually a movie about male strippers. I said, male strippers? He goes, yeah, male strippers. I said, you do know that this is Gabriel Iglesias, right? <laughs> He goes, you're funny, bro. Listen, we've already got the dancers, but we need somebody to play the DJ at the club. Will you audition for the part? I said, you know what, bro, I'm, I'll be there, okay? And just to let you guys know, because some people have asked me in the past, how come you're not in more movies? Because you have to audition. And I don't like auditions because they- Auditioning sucks. Uh, I know he said like, you know, this is Gabriel. I wondered like, was he saying like, you, this is not Enrique. Like who, who was the other uh, Iglesias that he was referring to? Because <laughs> Enrique Iglesias is in great shape. So I'm wondering if that's who he was referring to. And also auditioning sucks. It sucks come you're not in more movies because you have to audition and I don't like auditions because they treat you like crap auditions are very cold and very just they make you feel like shit they seriously do you work really hard to memorize all your lines and you show up and you try to do your thing and they cut you off really quick you're in there and you're like um okay so who am I re hold on oh, okay I'll, I'll hold on hey, how's it going don't talk to him all right no problem okay are you ready yes I'm, I'm ready um quick question how much energy do you want you don't know um that's why I'm asking uh <laughs> And when you're done, you try to ask him more questions. Like, is this okay? Would you like me to go again? Thank you. Thank you. I've had my, the fingers. This, so rude. So many times. And it hurts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you're sitting in your car and you're crying. <sighs> okay, to speak to this. For those of you that don't know, um, I was a talent agent for three years. Um, and before then, I was a commercial and print model. And so I've been on many auditions. And it's interesting, that is the, like, actor take on auditioning. But coming from an, an agent perspective where casting will call an agent and curse an agent out. Like, let an agent have a good one for sending someone to an audition who wasn't prepared, who wasn't just a consummate professional, who didn't come in and know exactly, who knew their notes, who knew, you know, what the tone of the audition was. You come in an audition, you ask questions, they're gonna, they're gonna do that because they see hundreds of people a day and they're trying to cast one role. So they have to be snippy and kind of rude and see how you work under pressure. All these things are like, they really, they see and know what they need to know within three seconds. Three seconds. It takes three seconds. So 
he is so right about that but there is another side to it so if you if you want to audition don't be afraid you just have to know what you're doing and like really go in there and fake it till you make it all right all right <laughs> they don't like me it's a terrible feeling, so I don't like putting myself through that. But since I got a phone call from the guy, I'm like, all right, I hope it's a little bit different. So I show up to the audition, I'm sitting in the lobby, and it's funny because anytime there's an audition, everybody at the audition, usually they're looking for a specific type. Mm -hmm. And so everybody that's sitting looks there the with same. me looks just like me. <laughs> everybody in there is big, everybody's sitting there, everybody's all happy and jolly and stuff, and we're all looking at each other, trying to outdo each other, like, no, I look more like me than you do. You don't look like me. No, this is what they want. No, this is what they want, you know? <laughs> so the receptionist looks at me, she goes, Mr. Iglesias, they'll see you now. And I'm like, okay, cool, here we go. Let's, let's see how this goes. So I start mentally preparing myself for the, you know, the problems that happen in there. I walk in, I don't say anything to anyone. I walk in, there's three people in the room. I close the door. And I just look over at the casting person who's sitting on her desk and I, hello. And the, her, the camera person and the person I'm reading with all jumped up and yelled, Fluffy! And they ran over to me and they started hugging me and pulling. I can't believe, I mean, I guess just because I have always referred to him as his real name um, since being on this channel where I was introduced to him. I'm like, people really call him Fluffy? Like fanatically? <laughs> And they always scream it, I'm assuming. It's never just like, hi, Fluffy. It's like, Fluffy! <laughs> yelled, Fluffy! And they ran over to me, and they started hugging me and pulling out camera phones. Now I'm taking pictures with them. Next thing you know, they call a receptionist. Judy, get in here. And girl comes in. Now I'm taking pictures with four women. We're going back and forth. I'm like, this is different. <laughs> you know? And I go, wow, you know, this is very refreshing. Thank you. I says, who am I reading my part with? And the casting person says, this is a formality. They've always wanted you for the part. Oh, and they wow. said, if you showed up, it's yours. So basically, we've already called your agent since you showed up. <laughs> really? Yeah, this is great. So I, I get to my car. My agent is blowing up my phone, right? And I answer the phone. I go, hello. He's like, dude, you nailed that audition. <laughs> what? And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it happens just like that. Sometimes you didn't even stand a chance. They do have to do things for formalities, like legal legal reasons. Like it's kind of like discrimination, like if they don't see other people, you know what I mean? So yeah, but it does happen like that sometimes. What did you do? I was like, dude, I took pictures. <laughs> Way to take those pictures, bro. Next thing I know, I'm on the set of the movie Magic Mike. The movie is directed by a, a director named Steven Soderbergh, who's an amazing, amazing director, who's done a lot of great films, and of course, Channing Tatum's in the movie. In addition to him, there's an actor by the name of Matthew McConaughey, who's attached to the movie. I'm a huge fan of Matthew McConaughey, okay? When I found out I was gonna work with him, I was so excited. You know, and people say, really, you get excited? You get starstruck? Hell yeah, <laughs> I'm a comedian, not an actor. <laughs> So I show up and immediately they send me to the makeup trailer that's parked outside. So I go inside the makeup trailer, I sit down, they start working on my hair, they start putting makeup on me and in comes Matthew McConaughey. And he sits down in the chair next to me and I start freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, that's Matthew McConaughey. Oh my God, that's Matthew McConaughey. And now I-, I did not know Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey was a part of this franchise. Is he in the movie? Cause he said he's attached to it. So like, is he a producer? Is he like in, I've never seen the movies, y'all. I'm sorry. I know there's like two. Is it two or three of them now? I'm late to the party. I'm sorry. But I did not know he was. If he's in it, I had no idea. To me, And I start freaking out. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And now I, I decide to introduce myself before I did or said something stupid, right? So I look Good over idea. at him and I say, excuse me, Mr. McConaughey. How you doing? My name is Gabriel Iglesias. I'm going to be playing the part of Tobias, the club DJ. And I just wanted to say hello. And it's an honor to work with you. And in my head, I'm like, I hope he's the same guy. I hope he's the same person from the movies. I hope his voice is the same. I hope his accent's the same. And he looks at me and he says, all right. <laughs> How you doing there, big man? You doing good? I'm doing good. All right. And I'm spazzing out. <laughs> and they pull my ass out of the trailer and they take me onto the set. And uh, 
the majority of the shots in the movie Magic Mike are shot inside of a strip club, okay? It's on a stage, and I'm very comfortable up here. But the cool part for me is I'm on the side of the stage inside of a DJ booth, so I don't have any worries. The director comes up to me and he says, listen, Gabe, you got all your speaking roles in the film, but in addition to that, you are the key background in every shot when it comes to the dancers. He goes, the guy on stage is the eye candy, but you're the guy that provides the ear candy and you need to express yourself and give me energy. Can you do that? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Next thing I know. All right, everybody, here we go. And quiet on the set. Hit, and action. He's so All good. Dancing. <laughs> Dancer comes out, camera starts panning just like that one, right? And all of a sudden, I'm in my DJ booth, and I start DJing it up. <laughs> Have you ever watched a movie or a TV show, and everyone that's like dancing to the song or the DJ is playing is like they're dancing to a completely different song than we hear? That drives me nuts. It's like the song will be like, mm -mm -mm -mm, and they're dancing to like, under the sea. Under. It's like, why don't they match the music up? Why don't they match it up? Because on set, the people are really dancing to a song. It's like, why not just play the actual song? It, it grinds my gears. Bring it up. <laughs> oh, my God. The director comes out from behind the camera, crosses the stage, and gets in my face. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Give me more. Like, okay. All right, we're gonna, here we go, quiet on the set, and action. <laughs> and I take off. <laughs> oh, I have to see the movie now. I have to see the movie now. I have to see the movie now, The movie comes out. I attend the screening of the film with my girlfriend at Warner oh, Brothers Studios. We're sitting there and we're waiting for that part to come up. Sorry, y'all. I was trying to make sure uh, something popped up over here and distracted me. But I have to go see the movie now. Now I got to go see the movie because I need to see. Well, not like it's in theaters. I need to like find it on on my fire stick but um i have to see him acting like this because i don't believe it in the screening of the film with my girlfriend at warner brothers studios we're sitting there and we're waiting for that part to come up and i tell her baby it's coming it's coming watch sure enough the camera starts panning and you see the dancer you can't even see his head all you see is his body all freaking ripped and moving and in the background in the dj booth you cannot see any of the dj equipment because it's all below the line of the camera. All you see in the background is some chubby pervert in a box having the time of his life. <sighs> oh my God. And my girlfriend's like, oh, you're gay, I guess so. <sighs> And that was my Hollywood debut right there. And in addition to that, there was a couple of other things that happened. Can you imagine? I mean, it's better that he could be seen than like him, he being like, babe, here I come. And then they cut him. So, you know, pick your poison, but <laughs> that's awful. Why would they cut out the DJ equipment? Why would they? I need context. I need to see this scene. Hollywood debut right there. And in addition to that, there was a couple of other things that happened in this movie that I got to share because you're never going to hear about them in a DVD bonus feature. <laughs> One of the characters in the movie, his name in the movie is Big Dick Richie. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. He's played by an actor named Joe. Joe's, Joe's a cool guy, cool guy. I, I met him out, you know, uh, we became buddies after the movie and uh, nice guy. He's big, he's ripped, okay? And his whole thing is he comes out on stage and he's dancing behind a silhouette. So all you see is the shadow of him dancing for three minutes. And after the third minute, he grabs his G-string and this is how he finishes his performance. He tears it off, exposing a shadow of, you know. <laughs> what is it, a Tyrannosaurus Rex? Why does he sound like a dinosaur? <laughs> that thing sounds deadly. <laughs> J 
Jurassic Park. Jurassic now Park. in real life, Joe does not possess. It's more like, you know, rawr. <laughs> <sighs> Don't laugh too hard, that's most of us, okay? <laughs> now, because they needed to make this scene happen and we're shooting it in Hollywood, they made a phone call to an adult film company that was up the street and they got a hold of their props department. Oh, gosh. And they said, basically, you know, what we need is about 45 impressive male rubber parts to be brought down to the set of the movie Magic Mike so we can attach one of them to an actor for a scene. It took maybe five minutes, minutes <laughs> for some guy to show up with a big trunk on the set. And you could just tell he did not belong. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and Channing Tatum saw him and he goes, are you the guy? I'm the guy. <laughs> and he brought him inside the house and he got all the actors around the kitchen table. And he told the guy, he says, listen, bro, dump it out right here. All of it. And the guy opened not dump it out, just a box of wahoos. You're just dumping it out on the counter. Oh, dear Lord. This story is taking turns. I wasn't expecting. I don't know what I thought this story was going to be, but I, I didn't. Well, I, one could have one could have guessed. One could have guessed. Around the kitchen table, and he told the guy, he says, listen, bro, dump it out right here, all of it. And the guy opens up the trunk, and he dumps out all of these big freaking, you know, it made a mountain. <laughs> and all the actors were just standing there, just staring, like, oh, my God. All of a sudden, the 12-year-old came out of all of us because we all grabbed right. one and started playing right. Star Wars. Just right. <laughs> that is to be expected, for sure. And started playing Star Wars. Just... Bend over, you will. And that's something you're not going to hear about in the E! True Hollywood story or something like that. And another thing I got to share about this experience doing the movie Magic Mike is that uh, we shot it in two locations. We shot it in Hollywood and we shot it in um, Orlando, no, not Orlando, Tampa, Florida. And one of the scenes was shot on a sandbar, which most of you know already is a little tiny island with nothing on it. It's a little real small and people go there and they party. And so we get to this little island and uh, this guy with the headphones, his title is PA, personal assistant, the director, and he comes over and he tells us, listen guys, we're gonna be here for a couple of hours. If you need to use the facilities, these are your options. There's no plumbing here. You can either go in the water uh -huh. or you can go to those bushes over there. It's up to you. And I'm like, I'm fine, I already went. Two hours, no problem. Four hours later. Of course. Oh no, not the bubble guts. <gasps> oh no. This is like worst nightmare material right here. The bubble guts and there's no plumbing. Do they at least have tissues if they go in the bush? Oh gosh. The gas release? The gas release? What do you need? Listen, bro, you guys said we were only gonna be here for like two hours. It's going on five. My stomach is killing me. What's the story? We're gonna be here for like another three. The director has some more shots. Oh! You have your options. Thanks. So the first thing I look at is the water, okay? And to put it into perspective for you guys, the water's like right there, okay? And all the actors are like, like, like right there, okay? <laughs> So it's like, are you kidding me? I'm not gonna go pop a squat in the water in front of all those actors just so somebody can walk by and go, Fluffy's killing fishes. <laughs> so I take a stroll out to the bushes, oh right? So I start walking God. out to the bushes, my stomach is killing me. And fortunately, by the time I got there, my stomach had settled. So I no longer had to go number two. But since I was there, you know, <laughs> go make it rain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I'm in the bushes and I'm doing my thing and all of a sudden I start hearing noises. Just oh, wrap it up. And you wrap know how it you up. just feel when somebody's standing like right next to you? And I couldn't turn around because, you know, I was doing my thing. All of a sudden, I see a shadow. A long shadow. <laughs> and it's coming in my direction. And I see that and I'm like, ha ha, funny Joe, that's funny. All of a sudden, that shadow started to pee. 
And I was like, oh my God, it's real. <laughs> now curiosity has me. Is it Shannon? Is it Chan Channing? Sh Channing? Is it Channing? Is it Channing? Is it Channing? Ladies and gentlemen, is it Channing? Oh my God, it's real. <laughs> now curiosity has me. I gotta find out who the hell the owner. <laughs> so really quick, I'm just like, you know, who? <laughs> All right. Dang it, I guessed the wrong person. <gasps> well, now we know a little something, something about Matthew McConaughey. All right. Okay, I have to go watch Magic Mike now. So you go have the day you deserve while I go do that. Peace.